Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Krad, and today I'm going to take some time to answer some of your questions that you had uh, left in the comment section of YouTube. So I have your comments open here and I'm going to be trying to answer some questions for you. And I intend to do this frequently, maybe every week. So if you do have specific questions, uh, leave them in the comments section below and I will try to get to them next time. Margie Bauker, and I apologize to anybody if I mispronounce her name, asked, does anyone know if YAG is contraindicated with the Vividi Extended Focus Lens? I read in the Alcon Professional Information not to use the Vividi Extended Depth of Focus Lens if a posterior capsulotomy is planned. YAG, in parentheses. How can a doctor know if the patient will need one prior to cataract surgery? Also, can this lens be used if you have an epiretinal membrane or macular pucker? Well, first I'll start out by saying that YAG capsulotomy is not contraindicated when you are, or after you put in the Vividi lens. What Alcon is referring to is if during surgery, there is a open posterior capsule, or you're planning a primary uh, capsulotomy, which means during your initial cataract surgery, you're gonna open the posterior capsule with forceps, then do not implant the Vividi lens. It's not referring to implanting the Vividi lens, and then if you develop a posterior capsular opacification in a number of months or a number of years, that you cannot perform a laser yak capsulotomy. This is specifically for opening the capsule during the time of initial cataract surgery. If it's going to be opened uh, intentionally with primary capsulotomy, or if it's open on accident with a posterior capsule rupture, the lens is not intended to be placed in the eye in that situation. Uh, and the second part of the question, whether it can be used if you have epiretinal membrane or macular pucker. Any epiretinal membrane or macular pucker will decrease the quality of vision, no matter what lens implant you use. So if you have, let's say, a macular pucker, and you're debating what lens implant to use, and you decide, hey, I'm gonna go with the Vividi lens. It's not gonna work as well as if you didn't have the macular pucker. Your vision quality will not be as good. And that goes the same for a monofocal lens uh, or light adjustable lens. If you have a problem, any problem with the retina in the macula, which is the central vision area, then the lens implant is not gonna work as well as if you didn't have it. Now, there are certain lens implants, like multifocal lenses, that decrease, that decrease one's contrast sensitivity, which decreases, think of it as it, the image may look a little washed out. The quality of vision is not as perfect as say a monofocal lens. Well, if you have the multifocal decreasing contrast sensitivity, and then you have the pucker or epiretinal membrane distorting the vision, it's not a good combination. You don't wanna add anything that will compromise the quality of vision in somebody who has a macular problem. Um, as for the vividity, it's technically an extended depth of focus lens, so it's not as problematic as if you had a multifocal lens, but I would not say it's as good as a monofocal lens or the light adjustable lens uh, in terms of quality of vision overall. That being said, there are advantages to having a vividity lens. You have a little bit more depth of focus, you might be able to see the computer better. So uh, I think it's reasonable as long as the patient understands the benefits and risks if they have a very mild epiretinal membrane, a very mild pucker, then they decided they want to have better computer vision. Uh, I personally think that computer vision with a vividity and a pucker would be better than a monofocal and a pucker, you see? But did you waste your money? Did you spend too much money? You definitely would have spent more money. The value is determined, of course, by the patient and the resources. But great question. The next question is by Mario Fernandez, and he, he says, after going through your excellent video explaining the best lenses in 2023, I would like to ask your opinion regarding what would be the best eye well for a person having controlled glaucoma nearsighted who suffered a retinal detachment 10 years ago. So um, it depends first on the retinal detachment. Was it a peripheral retinal detachment only affecting your peripheral vision? Or was it a retinal detachment that affected the central vision? Because if a retinal detachment affected your central vision, that means that the potential vision that you have in terms of reading 
uh, letters, reading words, uh, using your computer, reading a book, um, it's going to be limited because those photoreceptors in the retina were once separated and then you have surgery to put the retina back on and if it involved that central area of the retina called the macula, then no matter what lens implant you get, the vision is going to be limited. I definitely wouldn't recommend a multifocal lens implant in a person who had a retinal detachment affecting the central retina, uh, the macula, but uh, you could consider a monofocal, a light adjustable lens, or an extended depth of focus lens. I think that's reasonable. Um, the second part of the question about controlled glaucoma, it depends how bad it is. Is it mild glaucoma or is it moderate or severe? If it's very mild and controlled, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't mind uh, recommending a patient get any, really any type of lens that they want as long as they're a candidate with the other parts of their eye, like the cornea. But if it's severe glaucoma, I wouldn't recommend a multifocal lens because the quality of vision with that with those types of lenses are not perfect. They're not A+. Plus. Um, however, you could uh, do a monofocal lens, a light adjustable lens, or an extended depth of focus lens. So in that question, it really depends on how severe the glaucoma is or how the retinal detachment was. Did it affect the central retina or just the peripheral retina? Sergio Pro asks, or he says, wrong. The first question should be, would you be annoyed by light artifacts while riding, while riding at night? <laughs> well, that's definitely an approach to the conversation. I think that's a reasonable question to ask. It just depends how you want to present it. You could say, would you be annoyed with light artifacts or would you be annoyed with not being able to read without glasses? That's a different way. Um, my approach is a bit different, uh, but that's a reasonable approach. If you're an ophthalmologist, uh, try it out and let me know. <laughs> um, Igor K. asks, uh, Dear Dr. Krat, I came across information that suggests twerk lenses may not provide clear near vision. I was wondering if you have encountered any cases where patients with toric vividity lenses experience blurry vision when using their computer or phone, even with lenses calculated for near vision. Thank you. Well, toric lenses in general, you have to separate um, toric versus toric vividity. These are two different things. A toric lens in general is a lens implant that reduces astigmatism. Astigmatism is a distortion uh, in your vision that's caused by an irregular shape of your eye. Uh, and anytime you can reduce distortion of vision or improve the quality of vision, that's a good thing. So if somebody has astigmatism, reducing it is always a good idea. There are many reasons where, why a toric lens would not provide a clear near vision. It depends on if that toric lens was targeted for near or targeted for far. It depends on the toric lens's ability to uh, reduce your astigmatism. Was it implanted in the correct axis? Was the amount of astigmatism the patient had correctable with the toric lenses available? Or was the astigmatism what we call regular? There's irregular and regular astigmatism. Irregular astigmatism is not correctable fully with a toric lens, whereas regular astigmatism is uh, more correctable and the results are more predictable. Yes, there are cases. Uh, and a vividity toric, just like a toric lens, has to be oriented in the correct axis. Uh, the astigmatism needs to be regular astigmatism, which can be corrected, uh, whereas irregular astigmatism cannot be uh, completely corrected. And the target of the vividity has to be appropriate. If the result was off, whether someone was too far-sighted or too, too near-sighted, um, then uh, the patient will have blurry vision despite having the toric vividity lens. Jay asks, I am having to have my first cataract surgery at 44, which is really young. And I, can, and I cannot, for the life of me, decide between vividity or panoptics for my right eye. I've never needed glasses before, and nighttime vision is important to me. Two of the most frustrating of the symptoms of cataract has, has been glare around windows, halos, starbursts at night. However, cell phone and computer use is very important to me. Which would you ultimately recommend as a result? Thank you in advance. Well, Jay, I'm going to try to help you with this one, but you're not my patient, so I can't recommend a specific lens for you. But if I had a patient that was similar to you in their 40s and they were having uh, cataract surgery at a younger age, the first thing I would want to know is how severe is the cataract? Because if the halos and glare um, are that you that you are not tolerating well are from a mild cataract, then I wouldn't put a panoptics lens in your eye. 
Now, if your cataract was severe, and I feel that a multifocal lens would provide significantly less halos and glare uh, than your cataract because it's severe, then I would consider it. Um, I would definitely consider it because there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot to be said for the freedom of needing glasses, whether it's for far, near, uh, intermediate vision. Um, so number one, it depends on the severity of your cataract. If it's mild, I wouldn't recommend a multifocal. If it was severe, I would definitely consider it. At the same time, nighttime vision is very important to you. Anytime someone is on the fence, I like to recommend a conservative option, which is maximizing the quality of vision. If someone's on the fence, hey, should I go light adjustable lens to maximize quality of vision or should I go multifocal lens to get rid of reading glasses? If they're on the fence, I would rather them get the high quality vision of a lens like a light adjustable lens, like a monofocal, like a toric. And the reason for that is because when they don't like their reading vision, I can just give them a pair of over-the-counter readers or they can go buy a pair of over-the-counter readers and they'll be able to see everything they want. Whereas if they were on the fence and they got a multifocal, if they are unhappy, your doctor cannot just give you a pair of glasses and make all those halos and glare go away. We either have to uh, accept it or the patient needs to have a lens exchange, which is a second surgery. In a situation where a lens is debilitating on your vision and for your quality of life, we need to be, hey, we need to have options to be able to fix the problem. I would recommend that you go to a surgeon that is comfortable exchanging lens implants. And of course, lens exchanges are not guaranteed. There's no surgery that can guarantee a result, but you need to find a surgeon who's comfortable doing this for you. Because when I have a patient and I recommend a lens implant for them, and say they decided they want a multifocal lens, I am ready to exchange that lens implant if possible. In the early post-operative period, if you cannot live with a lens implant, say you gave it a few weeks and you're like, I can't live with this, or you gave it a couple months and you're like, I can't live with this. My quality of nighttime vision is not where I need it to be. I'm willing to give up my reading vision in exchange for better quality vision, especially in low light and at night settings. I would recommend that you have a surgeon who's comfortable doing that. Uh, I'm fabulous, yes, says, <laughs> hi there. I'm thinking of becoming an ophthalmologist. Do you think it gets boring over time since it's just related to a very specific body part? Um, the short answer is no, but I used to have the same worry when I was uh, in training deciding what specialty to go in. And I spoke with a cardiologist. And I thought as a cardiologist, as a heart surgeon, things are always gonna be so exciting. You're dealing with the whole body um, because the heart is related to everything else. Um, and you know what that cardiologist told me? He's like, I specialize in the mitral valve. <laughs> he says, all I do are mitral valve replacements. That's it. And so the point was, no matter what specialty you go into, you're going to find a niche that you really like, that you do, that you're good at. And you're hopefully uh, going to be happy with that decision. So no matter what specialty you choose, ultimately, uh, unless it's primary care medicine or ER medicine, uh, you're going to specialize and with the eye even, the eye is so vast, there's like nine subspecialties within the eye. So uh, you, might, you may become a neuro-ophthalmologist, a pediatric ophthalmologist, a cornea specialist, a retina specialist, a glaucoma specialist, a ocular pathologist. Uh, what else am I missing? Oculoplastics, if I didn't say that already. Medical retina, surgical retina. Um, there's so many, but uh, I might be forgetting one. <laughs> but... Uh, there you go. So, no, I don't think it's too specific a body part. Densi Burgery asks, is cataract surgery successful in patients with severe dry eyes and allergy problems? Well, one thing is that dry eyes and allergy problems can interfere with the workup or the healing of a cataract surgery patient. But yes, cataract surgery is successful regardless of how how dry the eyes are or if a patient has allergies because the goal of cataract surgery is to take out the cataract, put in a lens implant, so we solve the cataract problem. Now the question is refractive cataract surgery. So refractive cataract surgery is more specifically trying to not only remove the cataract but to give the patient a refractive outcome that's so good that hopefully we minimize their need for glasses. And so Dry eyes and allergies can cause significant problems in these kind of patients. 
One, when we do cataract surgery, we rely on many measurements uh, before surgery. And dry eye specifically can cause inaccurate measurements. And if we have inaccurate measurements, uh, the outcome of the patient will be less predictable. So you might be successful at cataract surgery, but you, won't, but you will not be successful at refractive cataract surgery, if that makes sense. So it's very important to control the dry eyes and allergies prior to getting your measurements, prior to your surgery, and to continue to control them after your surgery. Mr. Moody Hank says, Hello doctor, what about Alcon Vividi Toric? Clinic in my city recommends this one for my needs. Pros and cons. Well, the pros uh, of the Alcon Vividi Toric is that it will decrease astigmatism. And I say decrease, not eliminate astigmatism, because most of the time it's decreased, not eliminated. So the Toric uh, version of the Vividi will decrease astigmatism, which is always a good thing. The uh, Vividi lens ha is an extended depth of focus lens. So in an ideal situation, it can give you very good distance vision and very good intermediate distance vision, such as when you're using your computer, if you're looking at price tags at a supermarket, um, it can give you very good intermediate vision. So overall, it's an excellent lens. It just depends on what your vision goals are. Um, you will not most likely be able to read very close at 15 inches, 16 inches with the Vividi lens, unless you did a mono vision with the Vividi. Um, and so as long as you're okay with reading glasses for small print uh, and the outcome of the surgery is successful and the predictions were correct, then you should do very well with that lens. AV asks, what about Alcon Acrosoft in 2022? Alcon Acrosoft is a platform that has been used for decades, I think. Uh, but uh, if your area has Clarion, uh, which is a type of lens material that is less prone to glistenings, then I would opt for that because uh, costs will be the same. So I would definitely go for Clarion over Microsoft. Well, I hope you found that helpful. My goal is to try to answer your questions to uh, improve your understanding of cataract surgery, lens surgery, or laser surgery. If you didn't, leave a question in the comments so I can answer it for you next time. I plan to do this regularly. Maybe I will do this next week. So subscribe, ask a question, and I will try my best to answer it. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Peace.